Hargrove's first attempt to locate the purported sunken church turned out to be a horrible experience. Lake Taal's waters gave extremely low visibility and introduced him to the unfamiliar sea snakes. Well, I would never have gone back. We'd have never dived again, except for one thing. We didn't find the sunken church, but on that first dive, Ranjeev Kush, was the, he was then in high school and was the son of an eerie scientist, found at 60 feet depth the broken clay pot. And this is it. I don't know how he recognized it as a pot. And he brought it up, and then we took it to the uh, National Museum, the archaeological section. They kept it a couple of weeks and dated it as 15th or 16th century, pre-Spanish. And here you see we, we cleaned this off. But the most interesting part of it was this crust here. It's covered by coral. It's coral. I'm almost positive that it's coral. We dipped, uh, dropped pieces into uh, hydrochloric acid and it bubbles, which means it's calcium carbonate, that it's organic. And, uh, okay, but how could this pot have been covered by coral? When the owl is supposed to be fresh water and corals thrive in seawater. Precisely. Either this pot had laid in the ocean for a long, long time and was covered with coral, then someone found it, took it to Lake Taal, dropped it in the water, and then we found it, which is not very likely, or the coral formed on it where it was. The first dive at Lumang Lipa, or Old Lipa, prodded Hargrove and his companions to reconstruct the area's history, causing him to raise more questions about it and enhancing his desire to dig deeper into what had, up to that point, just been legend to the townsfolk. Did you ever wonder why the town of Ta'al is not on Lake Ta'al, but it's over on the ocean, right? Yes. The answer is because it used to be on the southern shore of Lake Ta'al. The original Ta'al town is still there, where San Nicolas is today. But the towns of Lipa, San Awan, and Sala were certainly not where they are presently. Based on chartings of the movement of the Ta'al towns, it appears that there may have been as many as 12 sites for them, four of which may now be lying at least 10 meters beneath the lake's waters. As bits and pieces slowly began falling into place, Tom returned again and again to the lake area to gather more data. What evidence has Tom have uh, you discovered in the process of your diving and your research that led to the creation of this uh, sunken city legend, or is it a fact now? After we found this pot, and then we started reading, then we went back to this barrio, and there, fishermen asked us to look at something else that's interesting. They call it Sapao, uh, S-A-P-A-O, which... Uh, they say means underwater, built up things under the water. And they took us to this place, and we dived down, and there we can see these walls that are built up of stacked stone at about, uh, the bottoms at about 30 feet deep. And from there then, I started, we started doing more research, uh, and I was at the National Archives one day in Manila. And I was going through old Spanish documents. Um, this was about 1981 or 82, I guess. And I always thought if I could just find a map. And as I was leaving the archives, I saw on the wall an old Spanish map. And it turned out it was the Murillo Velarde map of 1734, which is generally considered the first fairly accurate map of the Philippines. And there was Lake Taal. And when I saw it, though, it's connected by a wide channel to the sea, not by the Ponsipi River, which is uh, just a small river today, but by a wide channel. And there is the town of Ta'al on the southern shore, Lipa on the southeastern shore, and Tanawan along the northern shore. Sapau, which means built up structure underwater and which subsequently yielded new meanings of vital importance to Hargrove, were found to be parallel rows of wall like formations, one to two meters high, and made of stones 20 to 25 centimeters in diameter. Although time and nature had obviously done their part in rendering the walls imperfect, they certainly appeared man made. 
Along the lake shore in Tangkaban, Hargrove and his party found heavily carved rock formations that rise one meter above water in the dry season, but are submerged during the rainy season. The Tangkaban Sapau were found to be of coral beneath its outer crust, leading Hargrove to conclude that they were ancient coral beds. Coral was used as building material for the original Taal Cathedral and for the church in Teisasai, to which the fleeing Taalenyos had sought refuge during the 1754 eruption. But no local legend exists that says there is a sunken church in Tangkaban. Instead, the legend places the church south of Lumang Lipa, where the Hargrove party found a coral crusted pot on their first dive. A dive in late 1987 led to yet another discovery, strange carvings on a rock close to the shore. On it were a dozen round holes, all perfectly carved. One could only surmise that these holes could have supported the base of a large light post, an immense cross, or a lookout tower or tanawan. Then, the party saw a wedge with a flat bottom, which turns to a 1.5-meter cul-de-sac to the north. Again, it could lead others to believe that it could have been an emplacement for a small cannon to guard Tanawan from ships invading the volcano island from the southwest. Or again, the base of a large cross the Augustinians may have erected to exercise the volcano. Furthermore, there is what the group had come to call the slot, also a perfectly chiseled structure, 70 centimeters long. They also found a semicircle of Sapau, a meter high, at a depth of three meters, facing Volcano Island six meters south of the rock. One myth says that the Sapau may have been ruins of pre-Spanish forts, which compounds the mystery of the Taal area. While Sapau could indeed be the remains of a sunken church, it could also be related to a cemetery found by a farmer within 100 meters of a small church in Balas. The graves yielded Chinese celadon and Filipino clay pots, indicating pre-Spanish burial practices that ceased when Catholicism was introduced in the Philippines. Hargrove's several dives into Lake Taal pushed him to do more and more research. It was perhaps a natural instinct, as he is basically a scientist who also did not relish the thought of being branded a charlatan or considered gullible. Each research effort has so far been rewarding, especially with the surfacing of old maps, because they served as strong evidence that Lake Taal was once easily accessible from the sea. To them, however, it is the marine life in the lake that has strongly supported what could be mere historical or biological coincidences. Uh, the marine life is fascinating. You know, the lake abounds with marine life that shouldn't be there, but apparently has adapted since the days it was salt water. Uh, familiar with the famous uh, maliputo. maliputo that, yeah. Okay, that is actually a mackerel that is adapted to fresh water. The tawilis, uh, the famous uh, small fish, the delicious, that is one of the world's only freshwater sardines. And when we go diving, what we try to do is to buy a couple of kilos of those uh, tawilis and have them roasted while we're diving, and then we have that for lunch. Delicious. The uh, Sharks were found in Lake Taal. There's Spanish records and documents, including by Dr. Rabor, the biologist at uh, the University of the Philippines at Los Banos, uh, confirmed and has studied that there were sharks in the lake. But these sharks were exterminated by overfishing in the 1930s. But the most prevalent thing that you see are the sea snakes. They're very poisonous. They're the same sea snakes that are found that you see in the ocean off of the Phil uh, in Philippine waters. Uh, uh, there is, oh, as long as maybe two meters or six feet, no, maybe five feet long, uh, black and white banded with flat tails and little bitty small mouths. And uh, it's the world's only freshwater sea snake. 
has had marine plants scientifically examined abroad and achieved results showing they belong to the sponge family, which is normally found only in seawater. Hargrove's most recent dive revealed more sponges and a deep sea coral reef. What is Thomas Hargrove up to? And what does he hope to achieve with his persistent investigative sorties to Lake Taal? His little network of research assistants, which include his wife and historical experts, foremost of whom is Dr. Isagani Medina of the UP, have consistently shared with him his drive to discover more conclusive evidence about what was originally a legend. I think it's a confirmed. It's that, uh, that these four towns were built along the lake and that Lipa and Tanawan uh, were abandoned and the priests wrote that they were uh, submerged. And we found walls then, these ruins and so forth, at the places to, where they're supposed to be. The only thing we're after here is history. To me, it's a fascinating story. It's a dramatic story. Uh, it's like detective work uh, or like working a jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. The search never ends, and as more and more proofs emerge that point to the sunken settlement in Lake Taal, so does the entire picture slowly come into focus. Tom Hargrove is not out to disprove historical fact or dispel myths. He is only out to confirm what people have always believed exists.